Uh, you fell for the classic trap. I lured you in with a clickbait thumbnail making you think there was some sort of drama or something, but psych, I'm just here to talk about scientific integrity and the peer review process. Ha ha! Over the past few weeks, I found a niche where I combine over-the-top mathematical analysis with video games like Pokemon and, if you couldn't tell from that intro, weirdly elaborate jokes. It's been a lot of fun, I'm actually really enjoying all the math stuff, but I'll admit, I'm far from perfect. And through my past videos, I've made my fair share of mistakes. And instead of just sweeping them under the rug and trying to maintain this illusion that I'm some sort of like math genius or something, I thought I'd take the time today to highlight some of the mistakes I've made and try to correct them. Because there's no point in making mistakes if you can't learn from them. That and this week is Thanksgiving here in the States so I didn't have time to make a full-fledged video for the channel, so this is a lot faster. It's a win-win! In no particular order, let's start off with this video where I tried to calculate the maximum possible damage you can deal in a single attack in Pokemon. I'll try not to spoil any of these videos too much for those of you who haven't seen them, but let's start off with a few minor things. First, I said that one of the most pivotal moves you would need on your Shuckle is the move Power Trip to switch your attack and defense stats. Problem is, that's not actually what Power Trip does. The move I was thinking of is Power Trick. A dumb mistake, but then again, there's like 50 moves that are called Power Something. So, you know what, Game Freak, I think this one's on you. There was also a part in the combo where I said you needed to one-shot your own Metacham who was using Ice Ball to force it to switch out. Now this is all well and good, except a few turns ago we had used Skill Swap to move Sturdy from Shuckle onto Metacham, meaning it can't have its HP reduced to zero from full health. A lot of you came up with some really creative solutions to get around this, like giving your Metacham a Flame Orb to burn it or something. Or, you know, you could just have your Shuckle have the ability Gluttony instead. <laughs> except none of that really matters actually, because you don't even need to have a Metacham on your combo to begin with. Well. Not for this part anyway. You see, when building this combo, I ran into an issue where I needed a Pokemon with both the ability Pure Power and the move Ice Ball. And the only way to achieve that was via the move Metronome. While this is technically true, a lot of you correctly pointed out that there is a pretty simple way to get around using Metronome by not having Metacham be the one to use Ice Ball. Instead, you can replace the Trevenant that I was using at the beginning of the combo to use Forest Curse on Noibat with a Smeargle. Smeargle's sketch move lets it learn any attack in the game with the proper preparation. So if you get yourself a Smeargle with Forest Curse and Ice Ball, then you can kiss that metronome goodbye. Heck, you can even put Transform on here to replace one of the Cherims and pull off this combo with only a team of five Pokemon. Using a Smeargle requires it to reorder everything a bit, but it makes the odds of success a lot better. How much better? Well, I actually have no idea. I didn't redo the math for this, but if I had to guess, probably still isn't great. Some other quick things from this video, there's some conflicting information on how the metronome item interacts with moves like Ice Ball. The metronome item increases the damage of a move every time you use it consecutively, but with moves like Ice Ball, where the Pokemon automatically uses it again and again for multiple turns, does the buff get applied every time the Pokemon uses the move or every time that you select the move? It's unclear. I found a bunch of sources claiming both sides, so I'd have to do some experience myself to figure out for sure. But again, it doesn't matter much anyway because another part of the combo requires you to use Defense Curl to boost Ice Ball and then use Ice Ball 15 turns in a row to build up your metronome. But the Defense Curl boost only lasts for five turns of Ice Ball. So in order to get the Defense Curl boost for your final hit, you'd have to break your metronome chain anyway. A better bet would be to somehow move a Choice Band onto Shuckle while it's using Ice Ball to give it a comparable attack boost. Moving on to my most recent video, where I tried to predict which starter Pokemon from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet would be the strongest. First of all, I made a couple of predictions in this video that didn't end up being correct. This in and itself isn't a mistake. I made those guesses mostly just to suit the narrative of the video, and I think pretty much everyone understood that. No, the mistake here was that I released the video a day before the games came out in the US, and all the people who got the game early or looked up leaks posted a whole bunch of spoilers for the starter's final types in the comments. So, you know, that was, uh, 
That's kind of a bummer. Also, it was brought to my attention that a lot of people think this is supposed to be Quaxley's hair and not a hat. And look, I get it. He certainly flips it around and styles it like hair in his animations. I can see the reality that you're all living in, but I'm simply choosing to ignore it. It will always and forever be a hat to me. Hashtag Hatsley forever. Hat, hat, hatsley. Quack, quacksley. Quack. We'll workshop it. This video where I tried to calculate the actual size of all the Pokemon regions involved a lot of math. And while my calculations were sound, a lot of people rightly pointed out that I should have used more than just one reference measurement for Galar and Paldia, and instead done several and gotten an average. That's just good scientific practice right there. In the title of this video, I implied that Magcargo is hotter than the sun. Problem is, the sun isn't just one single temperature. So while, according to the Pokedex at least, Magcargo is twice as hot as the surface of the sun, on average, even there, there's a lot of variation. It is significantly colder than its core. Seems like this is just nitpicking, but that's actually a difference of several million degrees. So, you know, kind of a big deal. Also in that video, I made a joke that I didn't think anybody actually understood thermodynamics and it was just a big elaborate inside joke, but apparently some people do. And they were able to explain to me that because the cargo was so small compared to the sun, being that hot wouldn't actually be as catastrophic as it seems. Sure, if you touch it, you're gonna die. But standing even a dozen feet away, if you're outdoors, you'll probably be okay. It's kind of like how you can stand next to an open 400 degree oven and not get burned. And last but not least, probably the video with the most errors in it, this video where I tried to calculate which Pokemon was statistically the strongest. Now, there are a lot of mistakes here that I could talk about, but I think there's one main overarching issue that I could talk about with this one. And that is clarifying your design intent. Basically, before you do any sort of project, whether that's a legitimate engineering problem or a silly video about Pokemon, you need to clarify what your goal actually is. As one of my old engineering professors once put it, if we don't know where we're going, how will we know when we get there? For this video, and in all my videos, my primary goal is first and foremost to entertain. So the whole concept of finding the strongest Pokemon was really just a vehicle for whatever dumb jokes I came up with. Problem is, that video attracted a whole bunch of new viewers, and I didn't give them any indication about what my channel was all about. So while my 400 subscribers at the time might have gotten what I was trying to do, I was making everybody else rely on context that I never gave them. I'll admit, at first I was kind of frustrated that people were taking my analysis so seriously and pointing out all the errors and shortcuts that I knowingly took. Like, yeah, I knew my ability method was BS. I knew that I cut a whole bunch of important stuff as part of a joke. But at a certain point, I realized that if that many people didn't get the joke, maybe it just wasn't a very good joke to begin with. Since that video, I've been working a lot harder to strike a balance between comedy, story structure, and actually interesting math stuff and I think I've gotten a lot better at it with each video, but yeah, for this one, a big swing and a miss. Well, in fear of running out of time to edit this thing before the holidays, I think I'll end this one right here. But I hope you enjoyed this little peek behind the curtain, I suppose. And who knows, if you all liked it, maybe I can make this like a recurring thing. So if you see any more egregious errors, like forgetting that Smeargle exists in any future video of mine, don't be afraid to call me out on it. Like I said, I am far from perfect when it comes to this stuff. I make mistakes but I also love to learn. And just so you know, no matter how rude you are to me in the comments about some dumb mistake that I made, it ain't nothing compared to what my assistant Richard says to me. He's mean. All right, I'll see y'all next week for more regularly scheduled content, but until then, don't forget to take it easy.